Hi and welcome to anti-differentiation, otherwise known probably to the rest of the world as integration. Uh, today we're going to look at indefinite integrals. Those of you who are having me, please, 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 please do those questions. But by the end of the lesson, hopefully all of us, those of you in internet land and me here, will know how to find a function from its derivatives and what an indefinite integral actually is. But before we rush, let's just go back and do a little bit of a recap for differentiation. Now, if you remember, differentiation is about finding the gradient of the tangent at a point on a function. All right? That's literally all it is. And it's a great little process. You multiply uh, the coefficient by the power and then take one from the power, basically, long story short. So if we look at a few of the different functions, I've got three for you here y equals x squared plus 4, so that one becomes y dashed is equal to 2x. Remember, constants disappear when we differentiate. This one here also has y equals 2x, uh, that constant disappears, and likewise y dashed here is also equal to 2x. Now, that's interesting because what it's suggesting is there, those three functions each have the same gradient function. Well, actually, if we actually uh, sketch those together, and that was actually said twice in the sentence there, if we look at those sketches, it, it sort of makes sense because all of them were just the same function, that same basic y equals x squared, just translated vertically. So it would make sense if they had the same family of functions that the gradient function would be the same, i.e. y equals 2x. Now, when we differentiate, you have to make sure that you remember what the rules were. And basically, for each of the individual terms, multiply the term by the power. So if we had x squared, that is my power. Multiply what's ever in front uh, by 2. So that gave me 2x. And then subtract 1 from the power, and 2 becomes 1. All right? So that's the basics of differentiation. You're going to say, yeah, but we've done hundreds of these. Why are you talking about it? Hey, it's always good to help and do a little bit of recap summary. So the reverse of differentiation is integration. That's where we turn a differential back into its original function, or at least that's the theory behind it anyway. So it would make sense that when we differentiate, we uh, multiply by the power and take one off the power. So if we are going to integrate, we need to do things backwards in both senses. And so what I mean by that is we're going to add one to the power and then divide the term by the new power. All right, that seems to make perfect sense. So we already know that we've got three functions that we're going to try and get back to. We know that the differential function, uh, y dashed, was equal to 2x. So let's see what happens. That would suggest that y, because we're going back to my original function, we've got 2x. It says add 1 to the power. Well, the power is currently 1. Add 1 to the power is 2 and divide the whole term by 2. So that gives me that y is equal to x squared. Whoop, whoop. Thank you very much. That's my no, hold on a moment. There's a small problem. Yeah, y equals x squared. But if we go back to my original functions, one of them had a plus 4 on the end. One of them had a plus 7 on the end. And one of them had a minus 6 on the end. And yet this process here, sorry for scrolling too fast, only seems to give me the x squared term. And that's actually the point of uh, this integration. Because... The process in itself cannot tell us, without what I'm going to call initial conditions, whether there was a number on the end here. We, th there's nothing here. We, we can't just suddenly plonk on a plus 7 or a plus 4 or a minus 6 because, well, we don't know that it exists. So what we have to do is we have to put a plus C on the end of my integral. Why? Well, as I say here, we have absolutely no way of knowing what that numerical term is. And there's no way to find it using the process that I've just shown you. That is integration. Once you know how to add one to a power and divide by the power, that's integration. What we do with it, that's the exciting stuff. But we need to make sure that we add this plus C. If in an exam you don't add the plus C, then unfortunately your answer is wrong because you haven't actually understood the core purpose of integration. Um, so, well, that was a really basic term. What about if we've got the situation here? Well, remember that there's lots of different ways of writing a differential. Lots of different ways. We've had uh, y dashed. We know that there's dy by dx. We know f dashed of x. All of those mean the same thing. So if I'm now going to integrate this function, I'm going to say, well, f dashed of x is just going to go to f of x because the dash meant it was integrated, uh, sorry, differentiated. So I'm going to take it back to the original function. So x squared, add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. Awesome. The next term is x. So add 1 to the power, 2, divide by the new tower. This is freaking awesome. This is so simple. 
Uh, what about this three? Well, if we think as three as three x to the power of zero, remember anything to the power of zero is one. So I can write the number three as three x to the power of zero. And now that situation allows me to say that three x to the power of one divided by one. And we know that anything divided by one is one. Now, just as a word of warning or reminder, remember that can be now written as one third x cubed plus one half x squared plus x. And is that, uh, sorry, plus three x. And is that the end of my question? Nope, because I don't know what the initial conditions are. Right? And in that situation, I've got to put on a plus c because there may have been a vertical translation. Now, how do we show this? There's going to be a funky letter or some funky notation to help us work out how to integrate all this, asking me to integrate, and there's lots of ways of doing this. But generally speaking, we use this notation here. All right, so when we want to integrate a function, we say integral. And so in that previous example, x cubed plus x squared plus 3 could have been written like that. Wow! Now hold on a moment. If you remember back to a previous lesson, there are actually numbers on my integral sign, right? And that helped us find the area under that curve. Do you remember? And if you haven't, you've got to go and watch that video. It's freaking awesome. This doesn't seem to have numbers. Absolutely. And when it doesn't have numbers, it's called an indefinite integral. And any indefinite integral must, 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 must have this C. So what's this all about? Well, all it's trying to say is that if I integrate a derivative with respect to x, and again, I'll come back to that, with respect to x thing, I'm going to get my original function and I have to add on some sort of constants. And you're gonna say, well, hold on a moment, you've written it the other way around. Yes, because remember, what's on the left-hand side of an equals and the right-hand side of the equals it is the same. So this is probably the more noted way of doing it. Indefinite integrals are flipping awesome. And here are some examples, some quick, you know, rough and ready examples, because this lesson won't take too much longer. Note, please, that you have to be very careful with your notation. You'll notice that there are brackets in this question, and that is critically, critically important. If I was to write 3x squared plus 4 dx, then unfortunately in the eyes of the methods examiners, that would be bad notation, because in this situation, you've got a 4 with a dx on it, and the integration sign doesn't seem to belong to anything. You're integrating a function with respect to x, and so that function must, must, must be in brackets. Not in all cases, and I'll explain in a moment that, you know, the software I'm using isn't necessarily the best at trying to help me. But in this situation, in this question, if I'm going to integrate that now, I'm going to end up with 3x cubed, I'm adding 1 to the power, divided by that new power, plus 4, remember, x to the power of 1 divided by 1, and plus that c. So the 3 into the 3 gives me just the x cubed, I get 4x and I get plus c. So my original function, which we could write of f of x, for example, would be equal to that. Same situation here. That's going to be 5x cubed on 3 minus 3x squared on 2 plus 7x. And I have to put that plus c. Uh, is there any way I can make that simpler? Nope. And so that is effectively my answer. Now this one here is just freaking awesome because, well, there is a point that I don't need brackets, but for some reason Microsoft Equation Editor would not get rid of the brackets. But I want the integral of 1 over x. Well, I can't do that type of stuff, but I can change that into the integral of x to the minus 1 dx. Woo! So let's see what happens. Add 1 to the power uh, gives me x to the 0. Divide, uh oh, hold on a moment. We've got a huge problem here now. Divided by 0. If I try and divide anything by 0, I'm going to get an infinite answer or on my calculator, undefined. And ladies and gentlemen, that is one of the key things for integration. Anything works beautifully until you have something to the power of negative one. How do we do that? Well, that's for a lesson in a little bit. Other ways of expressing that we want to find the original function, remember, we can express things in terms of y dashed equals, dy by dx equals, or f dashed of x equals. So don't get confused if the question says dy by dx is 3x squared, find y. All it's trying to say is if you differentiate, sorry, 
All it's asking you to do is that you're going to get y by integrating 3x squared with respect to x. And again, that with respect to x means that you're integrating an x term. If I had with respect to y there, then it would make absolutely no sense because there's no y terms in here. So just be very, very careful. And I'm just going to write that out again so that my notes make sense in just a moment when I print them off. So how do we find this value of c? Well, we need to know something about the original function. If you go back, we didn't know anything about the translation of those uh, original three graphs. We just had to write the plus c, right? So if you remember, when we went back to the start, we ended up having to write it down as x squared plus c. I can find this value of c if, for this particular instance, I know one coordinate. And I'm going to call that an initial condition or something about the curve, right? It varies in terms of the language they use. But, for example, find the integral of 4x squared plus x dx if we know that f of 0 equals 0. This is my initial condition. And we actually think that's flipping awesome. So I now know that f of x can be given by, right, 4x cubed on 3 plus x squared on 2, and I have to do plus c. And it tells me that when x equals 0, my function is equal to 0. So when x equals 0, so there's my function being equal to 0. Well, that's 0, that's 0, plus c. Therefore, c is equal to 0. And so I can now confidently state, because of that initial condition, that my actual function has the equation 4x cubed on 3 plus a half x squared. I don't need to write the plus C anymore because they gave me some information relating to the curve. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was nice and short and wonderful. And thank you very much for your time. Hopefully you've enjoyed this lesson. Again, don't worry about this one. We're going to come back to that one in a moment. Negative powers, all about logs and bits and pieces, but that's in the next lesson. Thanks very much for taking the time to watch. I look forward to seeing you next time. Hey guys, if you've enjoyed watching this video, why not tune in and subscribe to get updates of when I do other videos. Alternatively, click this video that's coming up now, or just zip on over to mathsguru.com, M-A-F-F-S, guru.com, where you can actually access all the videos in a nice, easy to use way.